We've heard from the French president saying that Israel must stop killing babies and women in Gaza. Emmanuel Macron told the BBC in an exclusive interview at the Elysee Palace that there was no justification for the bombing, saying that a ceasefire would benefit Israel. While recognising Israel's right to protect itself, he said we do urge them to stop this bombing in Gaza. He's been speaking to the BBC's Europe editor, Katia Adler. We've had weeks of aid organisations sounding the alarm about Gaza, and so you've now said that humanitarian pauses in fighting aren't enough, and there needs to be work towards a ceasefire. Are you disappointed that other world leaders aren't joining you in that call, like the US or the UK? No, I hope they will. And let, let's be clear, I mean, I was one of the first leaders to call uh, the Prime Minister and President of Israel after the terrorist attack the 7th of October. We clearly condemn this terrorist attack and this terrorist group and recognize the right of Israel to protect itself and react. But day one, we say that this reaction and the fight against terrorism, because it is led by a democracy, should be compliant with international rules, rule of war, and, and humanitarian international law. And Day after day, what we saw is a per permanent bombing of civilians in Gaza. And I think it's, uh, it's very important to say the whole story. Uh, but I, I think this is the only solution we have. This is fire. Because it's impossible to explain we want to fight against terrorism by killing innocent people. You've talked about the fight uh, against terrorism needing to be merciless, is, is the word you used, but not without rules. And you've just referred there to the high loss of civilian life in Gaza. Do you think Israel is respecting those rules, the international rules that you're referring to? Uh, look, in the very first days, it's clear that the emotion, the compassion, uh, created a situation where everybody was just close to Israel and backing them and uh, sharing the pain. And we do share the pain and we do share the willingness uh, to get rid of terrorism. We, we know what terrorism means in France. But I think there is no justification precisely to attack civilians. What I would like to, just to clarify with you, are you saying that Israel is guilty of breaking international humanitarian law, w potential war no, crimes? No, I'm here. Look, I, I think it's not uh, the proper way to approach a question. We do recognize the right to protect themselves. And, and one month after this terrorist attack, I think it would be not the right way to deal with uh, uh, a partner and friend just to say you will be condemned and you are guilty. De facto, today, civilians are bombed. De facto, these babies, these ladies, these old people are bombed and killed. There is no reason for that and no legitimacy. So we do urge Israel to stop. I'm, I'm not here to, I'm not a judge. I'm a head of state. I just remind everybody international law, I call for a ceasefire, and I will urge them for a ceasefire, for an humanitarian ceasefire. That was Emmanuel Macron. Well, let's bring in our panel, Andrew Fisher, former director of policy at the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn, and Mo Alasi, executive director at the Georgetown Institute of Politics and Public mm -hmm. Service. Interested for you both for your reactions there to what Emmanuel Macron had to say. Andrew, I'll start with you. Yeah, uh, look, I think it's very welcome that he's joined the majority of world leaders, we shouldn't forget, who are calling now for a ceasefire in this conflict. Um, and it leaves President Biden and Rishi Sunak in the UK increasingly isolated in not backing a ceasefire. We saw the UN, you know, over 120 countries uh, backed a ceasefire. Uh, only a few, I think 14, voted against uh, the US, one of them. Um, so this is really important and a significant shift. And look, Emmanuel Macron is obviously a diplomat, a head of state. But the fact that he's saying to Israel, you have to abide by international law is a clear recognition that currently they're not. We've seen white phosphorus being used in densely populated areas. We've seen the carpet bombing of civilian areas. Um, you know, we've seen a siege imposed on a civilian population. 
um, which is, all of which are illegal under international law. It's very clear that Israel has not acted within international law um, in this uh, reaction to the terrible events of the 7th of October. So it's a significant intervention from Emmanuel Macron, and I hope it has influence both in the UK and in the US, because at the end of the day, there is no military solution to this. It is going to require a ceasefire and talks and a peaceful settlement that the Palestinians and the Israelis have been let down by their leaders and by the international community for at least 30 years since the last big serious attempt to try and get there. Mo, with regards to the kind of international community, do you think other leaders will look at what Emmanuel Macron had to say, take on board those comments and start to think they might air theirs more strongly? Uh, perhaps. I think a lot of the world is still... Um, uh, a lot of the world is really torn. They want to see Israel exercise its right to self-defense. They know that Hamas is a brutal terrorist organization and that it itself is uh, acting against the best interests of the people they purport to represent. Mm -hmm. Hamas itself is working against the best interests of the Palestinian people, preventing many of them from leaving, uh, using them as human shields. And so, you know, I, I think a lot of the world is still trying to grapple with this. I think people are increasingly horrified by the scenes and the images we are seeing of the devastation in Gaza and of all of the people who uh, who died uh, in, in uh, as a result of the military action. I found it interesting that the Israeli ambassador uh, to the UN uh, used the opportunity to attack the UN for accepting Hamas's propaganda. Uh, some of it is propaganda, and I'd take anything Hamas does with a, with a grain of salt. But at the same time, we are seeing these images for ourselves. We are seeing the devastation for ourselves. We know whatever the number is, too many civilians are being killed. I'm happy to see that the human that there's now going to be a daily humanitarian pause. Israel seemed to be uh, forced to take that step by international pressure. The Biden administration has been very aggressive in pushing that. But they do need to take more steps in their legitimate effort to eradicate Hamas uh, to protect the civilians. And I'm not sure they're doing that well right now.